Persona just dropped Studio One 5.2, and in this video, we're gonna be checking out my new favorite features. So yesterday, Presonus released a new update to Studio One, Update 5.2, and since then, I've had time to look and see what's new. Now, there are a number of new features, but not everything was production-related, so for this video, I thought I could walk you through the specific features that I'm excited to use in my workflow. If you want to see the entire breakdown of everything that was added, then I highly encourage you to watch Presonus' video and also read the change log, both of which I'll be linking down below. But okay, without further ado, let's jump right in. But okay, jumping into Studio One here, a lot of the updates that really caught my attention fell on under the workflow category. Now, the first one that I thought would be really useful is what they're calling their new MIDI smart tool. So then if you go over to any one of your MIDI events here, let me open this up real quick. And if you hover now over to any note, you'll see that your cursor now turns into like this little pen tool with three lines to the right. So what this allows us to do is a couple of different things. Number one, if you hover over the top of a note here and you click and drag, you're able to adjust the velocity. If I option or alt click near the top, I can mute the note or unmute it. If I hover over the bottom here, I can split a note and I can click back again to merge it. And then if I option or alt click near the bottom, I can not only split the note, but it also splits the MIDI container that that note is in. Now this is really useful because oftentimes as you're editing your MIDI, you have to switch between different tools by pressing different things on either on your keyboard or on Studio One to do basic tasks. And now you don't have to do that, at least for you know velocity and muting and stuff like that. So overall, I think this makes the, the workflow a little bit faster when editing MIDI. I no longer have to press the number two to switch over to the blade or what have you. I just have to go over to the bottom and make my splits. I don't have to do all these extra crazy things just to get basic things done, and that is amazing. But okay, moving on to my next favorite feature, Studio One now has improved BPM detection. Now, as producers, as beat makers, I know you understand my struggle. Sometimes we're dealing with loops that don't necessarily have a BPM information or data, and that can be really hard, especially if you're starting out and you don't know how to detect the tempo. Well, in this new update, Studio One has a couple of different ways to let you set the BPM in case the original file didn't have it. So to show you, let me bring in here an audio loop. Now, luckily for me, this person already labeled it, so I know it's at 88 BPM, but let's say you didn't know. All you have to do is go over to the top left here to this little eye. This is the inspector window. Click on that, then go all the way to the bottom. Now here, you're gonna see this little file tempo area. Now here, you're going to see a number in red, which is basically the number or the BPM that Studio One thinks this file is in. Once you're here, you could do a couple of different things. You could drop this arrow down and either approve the tempo double the tempo, half the tempo, or just clear it and input your own. Now, this is super simple, but I think it's extremely useful because again, sometimes we're dealing with loops and audio files that we just don't know what tempo they're in, and this makes it really, really easy to figure that out. All right, moving on down to my next favorite feature, and that is the ability to now be able to transform to audio external MIDI instruments. Now, unfortunately, I don't have one to show you here, but I can pretty much tell you the gist of what it does. Now, in Studio One, for any VST ever, you always had the ability to go over to the left here. So for this pad, this is a, an instance of expand. I can right click on this track. I can go down to the bottom and I can transform it to audio. What this is basically doing is transforming all the MIDI information into an audio clip. And what's even better is that it also gives me the ability to render any inserts and to preserve the instrument track state. What that basically means is that I always have the ability to go back from audio to MIDI in case I ever wanna make some changes. Well, basically this feature is now available for any external MIDI synthesizers. What's really cool is that if you ever do decide to go back from audio to MIDI, it'll remember exactly what patch your synthesizer was on. So basically, in a nutshell, what this means is that we now have total recall for external MIDI hardware instruments. Next up, we have a very simple improvement, but it is actually pretty cool. And that is the ability to change the panning of multiple tracks, multiple channels at once. Now before, of course, you had the ability to select multiple channels. And then if you wanted to change the volume of all of them at once, all you had to do was select them, of course, and then click on one fader and drag them up or drag them down. Now we have the ability to do that, but also with the panning uh, slider here. So I can click on one and slide left or slide right. Now this feature for me is going to be useful in cases where I may be working with like background vocals or just things that I know I want to be panned hard left and hard right. Instead of doing one by one, I can select them all and do it all with one move. All right, and last but not least, we have a new crash diagnostics tool. Now, I know this doesn't sound like much fun at first, 
But hear me out. Now, sometimes when we're working, Studio One will crash, and the most frustrating part is not knowing what caused it to begin with. Before, you kind of had to throw darts in the dark to guess what it was, but now with this new diagnostics tool, in some cases, it'll tell you exactly what plugin caused the crash. And then from that page, you could even disable certain plugin types like VST2s, VST3s, that one that Logic uses, I can't remember what the name of it. And then you could even send that report over directly to the IT support so they can help you out. That is going to be really, really handy. But there you have it. Those are my favorite features off the 5.2 update. Now there were two honorable mentions. Number one, we have a larger buffer now for the retrospective record, which is always a good thing. And then number two, we now have M1 support for Max. Again, if you wanna see all of the details of this update, then I'll make sure to link the change log down below. And then also go check out Presonus's video they do a fantastic job at explaining everything. Now, if you've already seen what this update has to offer, then I want to know what is your favorite feature? Let me know in a comment down below. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not already. But I'll see you on the next one.